All right, so with our seventh assignment, we're going to do digital painting. You'll find it in unit 14, and it has a question of the day. And you are allowed in this project, and only this project, <laughs> to use AI generative software. I give you a link to one that's free and fun to use. That's not too powerful, <laughs> so it won't tempt you too much. That's called crayon.com uh, to inform your digital painting. Now for your digital painting, for assignment seven, you can do a portrait from the shoulders up in any kind of style you want, as long as it's digital painting. Or you can do an animal from head to toe, and we're just going to do them on a blank background. We're only going to do this for a week. And that's not really long enough to do just a fully finished amazing digital painting of anything unless you have a very narrow focus. But it can be a, a fun way to learn the technique through exploring a personal style, right? Through an animal or a portrait. We can see lots more of past examples on the Imgur, you know, that people have posted. And what's great about it is you just have the control of all the pixels. You can do caricatures, you can go for photorealism, you can try to imitate other media you like, like watercolor, or collage, or oil paint, on and on and on. What I'm going to try to do is take inspiration from some of the, the artists you presented on in your individual presentations. And I took screen grabs here. And I especially like this one, this digital painting, even though it's low res there. And I like this one. And I'm going to apply it to the person I want to paint. And I only paint deceased people to avoid any legal or hopefully to avoid any legal complications. And I, I try to choose public figures, right? So this is a Supreme Court justice who, who died in the last few years, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And these are some of my stylistic references. And then I need some photo references too. Now what I sh encourage you to do, if you want to play with the AI, though it's optional, is to use this question of the day, which you can answer with over 100 words to get credit for you can inform yourself, especially through this video, how some of these new AI tools work. And then I give you the link to one, which is called Crayon. I also give you one for hugging face. You can try some different ones, but this just shows you the stable diffusion working. But this one is a little bit more useful. And you can put in a prompt, like I could say, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. in the style of Van Gogh. Sure, it's been done. And I say draw, and I'll let it do its thing for a minute or two. And then we're going to go right to the assignment. The first thing you need is photo reference. And what I'm going to encourage you to do is not to be limited by just one photo, because that kind of locks what you can do a little too much. Because anything that's wrong with that photo or uninspiring about that photo, that's your starting place for your digital art, if you're just looking at one photo as inspiration, even if you can get pretty creative with it with your techniques. And then I have this link, which is under assignments as well. It's these are two different uh, slide examples. One is my introduction to digital painting and how it's different than digital coloring. Because this is not underneath line art. This is going on top of a sketched line. Or just being based on shapes. This is called speed painting or shape painting. And then your end product, this is a past example I did of the author James Joyce. It can be fully representational. Or you can go for more stylized abstraction, right? And you can even kind of blend the two together. 
This is a, a student doing it. And they did a portrait of the, the actor Jack Black. And what's great about digital painting versus traditional painting is you can make changes in the middle and you can kind of stretch and play with different layers and change your direction as you go. And you'll see this student do this a few times. Just kind of warp it, change it up. You can obviously mess with the colors and just keep adding different layers on. And there are lots of different digital painting artists I like that have very, very different styles. So I kind of theme this, these slides on dragons because they're fun. And they build on top of their sketch. So that at the end, it's all just shapes and colors, no line art. Sometimes you work on a light background, sometimes you work on a dark background. It's a lot like digital coloring except the edge of each mark you make really matters. So it looks like pretty clean line art there, but then it all gets painted over. And then this is incredibly clean line art that all gets painted over for the digital painting. All right, let's see what kind of reference I got. All right, cool. So here we have Ruth Bader Ginsburg in a colorful style uh, in the style of Van Gogh. And what's nice about that, if I'm going to be inspired by some of these, this can help bridge the gap between my photo reference and some of the stylistic references I want to, to be inspired by. Though, of course, they're going to be limited and bias based on the model that's out there. So obviously, Starry Night is in every single one of these because that's what people mean when they say Van Gogh online. But I could be more precise. I could actually say in the style of Van Gogh and Gustav Klimt. You know, and I can just keep playing and find something really fun. I think the one that's going to be useful here is maybe this one. And the middle one. So I can grab a few of them. I'm just going to get kind of a low res screen grab because I can steal colors from it, I can get inspiration from it. Right. You go before, you think this one, this one, it's just not what I'm going for. Just because it's it's more modeled in the face. But I do like the glasses, so I'm, I'll grab it. Yeah, so it's going to be a mix of all these kind of in influences. Just like if you were painting at home and you had an easel set up or a desk, you might have different inspirational artworks around it. And then you can see other prompts people have done. And sometimes these really take me to interesting places, right? I kind of like the flat patterns of this one. So whatever you feel like doing. Okay. So this is a digital painting artist named Max Reed. And I really like their style because I always get way too fussy with my digital painting. And they just start with shape painting for the most part, sometimes with a, a really loose sketch, and then just build it up. But the end product always has a lot of their own personality. So it's informed by a photo, but it does not need to be limited by the photo. Like bold colors, fun compositions, whatever you want to do. And you can do an animal or a person. So the first thing you're going to post is your primary photo reference. But if you want to follow my lead here, you need one photo at least posted. And then you're going to sh show your finished painting. But I'm going to go ahead and open up Photo P. And I'm going to first bring in my primary photo reference from assignment seven here. Then I'm going to increase the canvas size a lot. So I'll make it, I don't know, like 14 inches by 30 inches, something like that. Have it grow from the corner. 
And now I'm going to bring in some of these other references, right? They might be professional work. This was a poster for a documentary that was made, right? I like how it simplifies her face. It might be the screen grabs from the AI that I got. A few different ones. This is your chance to, to play with AI and use it to inform your work. Not to create your work, but to give you something as reference. And you can see how close that is to that photo. Right? So that's one that's kind of an official portrait that's used a lot online. That's kind of the bias of these generative models. But I like how this one is kind of in between all of them in the, the angle on the face. And digital painting is a lot about your own personal taste and what you want to get at the end of the process. And then there are these. I really like kind of the soft edges of that one. I really liked the heavy brush strokes of this artist. Not being afraid of color. Not being afraid to go like flat and simple. And I think this was kind of the one that kind of shows a finish that I would be happy with. Where it's mostly flat and simple, but it's got some texture and some attitude in there. So now I'm going to take all those references, I'm going to crop it down. And there's a reason I'm doing it in a long vertical column, and I'll show you why. But I'm just going to save that just as a JPEG. So I'm going to export it as a JPEG. That's going to flatten it. And I'm going to call it my name and assignment seven photo reference. But this can also include your inspirations. Then I'll post that to Canvas. So I kind of know what direction I'm going. And if you're fancy, you can even just make your own photo reference. I could layer up different colors and things to make it match. What I did with the morning class, where I'm doing an animal, is I took my own photos of my cat, right? And I want to do a portrait of, of, uh, of Biggs here licking himself. But I want some of these kind of cooler colors. So I use some AI. And this is actually the one that's going to be kind of fun to use. This one right here, where I just layered these colors on top of my photo. Right? Gives me some ideas. And I'm starting that one with just shape painting, just kind of blocking in the big shapes. I'm not going to do any kind of sketch for that one. But for this demo, I'm going to do the sketch method. So what do I do? Now in Photo P, I'm going to close this and I'm going to make a new project that is large enough for printing. So I'm going to do 11 by 14 inches by 350 pixels per inch. Because maybe this will be a portfolio project. And then, because Photo P is weird, I need to go back to image size and I have to change it again to 11 by 14. You can do it portraits, portrait or uh, landscape format, you know, depending on what your subject matter is. Now I'm going to